Can I put some information in your bag? I'm Mira Oreck, the NDP candidate for the upcoming election. In an election campaign, right it's called the ground game. Nice to meet you. Have a good day. The game is played Hi at there. transit stations. Hi there, I'm Mira Oreck. I'm the NDP candidate for the upcoming election. Uh, and Aaron Broshko. Uh, it's hello. played on the hello. doorstep. Nice to meet you. Hi, this is Whitney. I'm with the Liberal Party of Canada. The political ground game can even be played by phone. It's all about introducing your candidates, identifying existing supporters, and urging the undecided to vote your way. In a federal election, the local ground game may not be as important as the national campaign, but it can swing local voter preference by a few points. And in a riding like Vancouver Granville, that can mean victory. In this election, B.C. has six more ridings, and one of them is Vancouver Granville. It's an interesting riding in that it's the only one in the city that runs north and south. Most of them run east-west, and it draws territory from a very politically diverse area, from the Liberals to the west and to the north, from the NDP to the east, and uh, from the Conservatives in the south. And because of that uh, the political uh, makeup of this riding, Every party thinks they have a chance here. Vancouver Granville is not only politically diverse, it's ethnically diverse too. Like many urban areas in Canada, the southwest side of Vancouver has changed dramatically in the past 20 years. Nearly half the people living here weren't born in Canada. If the 2011 election results were laid over the new boundaries, the Conservatives would have squeaked out a win. Ed, Aaron Broshko. Pleased to meet you. Pleased to meet you. Thanks for coming. Oh, my pleasure. Vancouver Granville is going to be one of the more interesting ridings, I think. Yeah. The Conservative candidate here yeah, is Aaron Broshko. But, uh, well, both the NDP and the Liberals feel that they have a chance here. The Liberals particularly, they've got uh, a very strong, or at least they think, a very strong candidate. What differentiates you between your opponents? Well, the common theme... From your opponents. Sure. The, the common theme within the riding, uh, again, is this, this desire for somebody to go to Ottawa to get stuff done. I live in the riding with my, with my wife and our, our three young boys. Uh, my wife uh, immigrated here from Asia when she was five years old. Her and her brother uh, are really the, the, the epitome of the immigration success story. Uh, they've come. They've added value. Um, they work hard for their community. And so we see that really across the riding. And so it's this desire for somebody with real-world experience, with a valuable skill set that can get stuff done in Ottawa, and somebody who understands the writing, understands the people, shares the commonalities, and understands the struggles. So your skill set, you're a, you're a lawyer by training, right? I am, correct. And, and you're now involved in an investment uh, business? Yeah, uh, so, um, I mean, just as, as background, I was a corporate securities lawyer at a large firm downtown for, uh, for almost seven years. Uh, after that, I ran a publicly traded biotechnology company, and I did that for six years. And then after that, uh, I oversee investments through an investment company of, of local investors, uh, who bought uh, companies in Eastern Europe, cash flow operating companies. And so I manage those uh, investments and work closely with regional uh, management in, in Eastern Europe. Metro Vancouver is the Liberal Party of Canada's last bastion in B.C. The Liberals won two seats here in the last election, both bordering on the new Vancouver Granville. Do you want to grab that one and I'll go to the next one? Jody Wilson Raybold is the liberal candidate in Vancouver Granville. She's a lawyer and an Aboriginal leader. So you do live in the riding? I do live in the riding, yeah. yes. Because I know there was a little bit of uh, controversy on your nomination. I know somebody was complaining that you've been uh, parachuted in or something like that. Well, there's, uh, I, I heard that too, but uh, for me, um, I was born here. This is where I grew up as a young person and uh, came back, uh, I spent some time uh, on Vancouver Island. I come from the Muskomad Zawadanik people of Northern Vancouver Island, and um, so I have relatives and roots on Northern Vancouver Island as well. I graduated from high school uh, on the island, but came back here to go to university. I graduated from UBC uh, Law School and have uh, since lived and worked here uh, as a prosecutor at the Main Street Criminal Courthouse, also known as the Zoo, for good reason, yeah. uh, to going on uh, to be the uh, a commissioner at the BC Treaty Commission, and in my most recent role as the Regional Chief of the Assembly of First Nations. So this is where where I come from. This is where my husband and I call home, and we're really happy to um, 
put our name forward, my name forward, to, in this election. Coffee in Vancouver. It's the classic image. Mira Oreck has worked on several political campaigns, but this time she's running for the NDP in Vancouver Granville. The political scientists would say that if there's three candidates, two of them are so-called progressive candidates and one to the right, then that favors the, the, in this case, the conservatives. Do you see it that way? You know, well, there's four candidates running, of course, including there's the Green, Green Party. Well, but and, yeah, I would um, put him on the progressive side. Yeah, and, uh, and no, I mean, I think that what I found actually somewhat most interesting is that people who um, previously voted for Harper or perhaps previously voted liberal are really wide open looking at who they're going to vote for. In fact, I think that's true for <clears throat> for a number of voters. It's not like, oh, I voted for Harper last time. I'm going to look a little bit less to the right, you know, and, and no, that's not what's happening. I think people are sort of going, I'm done with Harper. I've you know, but maybe voted for him once or twice, but the trade-offs aren't worth it. I don't want to support him anymore. I want something new. I want change. And who's the best leader to bring that? I mean, that is really what I hear day in and day out. Um, and I think for a lot of people, they're looking for someone with experience and someone who um, can be a leader with clear values, and they see that in Mulcair. There is also a green candidate running in Vancouver Granville, accountant, management consultant, and ecologist Michael Barkuski, but he wasn't available for an interview when we were producing this program. Richard Johnston, you're a, a professor of political science at UBC. Uh, you study the mood. What's the mood of British Columbians? Uh, the mood of British Columbians, I think, is like that in Quebec. Uh, the overwhelming majority of British Columbians want to defeat the government and will do what is necessary to that end. The NDP tends to get larger votes in B.C. provincial elections than most governments get anywhere. B.C. is a polarized two-party two system. Yeah. Yeah. So the NDP has a historic strength here. It was weak in the 90s, but the fact of the matter is the party has been one of the major players in B.C. elections since 1930. Well, even federally, they've federally held the majority Andrew, of seats. They did in the 80s, and yeah. you know they, were the, they became the opposition provincially in 1933. If you go back to 2011, right? so the, you know, 2011 obviously was a big success for the Conservatives, but it wasn't here. They actually lost one seat here. That, that the orange wave of 2011 actually improved the coordination, if you will, on the center-left and, and actually stopped conservative gains here, move it up still more, and you could actually reverse them. There's a suggestion that uh, things like the Duffy trial have, uh, have hurt the, the conservative campaign. Are mm -hmm. you hearing that on the doorstep? Maybe a little bit here and there, other than people being perhaps exhausted by uh, the fact that it's been going on on a daily basis. People are a bit relieved that it's over and they don't have to listen to it anymore. And I think what we're seeing now is uh, a focus nationally and certainly within Granville on what really matters to people, and, and it comes down to the economy. And this is, again, what I, what I you know, noted here earlier as being really this desire for common sense government. People want to know how are you going to help us in terms of helping us save uh, for the future of our family? How are you going to help our kids get jobs? How are you going to help me to ensure that you know, I'm going to have my job in the next two or three months? And you know, people are uh, concerned with what they see with the challenges in the global economy. You know, here in Vancouver Granville, of course, we have many people who have immigrated from mainland China. And so they see what's happening in China and the, the issues there with the economy. And so there is a level of anxiety, and what they're looking for is leadership. They're looking for a vision where they can get comfortable that our government is going to be prudent, is going to manage the economy well, and is going to ensure that their values are placed first and foremost, which is their family, their livelihood, and their prosperity. You're talking about um, changing government as one of the main issues that mm -hmm. people have uh, in Vancouver Granville, and the NDP is saying the same thing. So how do people decide between you and the NDP candidate if they want to change the government? Well, I mean, we're talking about changing government, um, but not just changing the government. We're talking about a better government. And one of the reasons why I got engaged in uh, or put my name forward to be the MP for Vancouver Granville is that the diversity that exists in this riding is a reflection of the diversity that exists throughout the country. And it's through that diversity that we've been able to uh, be an amazing country and to build a country that um, people from all over the world have come to and contribute towards. So um, in terms of our party, the Liberal Party, our, the foundation of who we are 
is based on equality and inclusion and we are building a party and a platform and form a government that uh, is strong because of all the differences that we have. But my point is, I guess, that, that the NDP are saying very similar things. Mm -hmm. So how do you differentiate? If, if, you're an, if you want to change the government, how do you convince people that you are the selection they should make as opposed to the NDP candidate? And you're saying similar things in terms of inclusion and changing the government. So what's the big difference between your, your policies and the New Democrats? Well, we, uh, we have uh, a leader in uh, Justin Trudeau that has um, uh, rebuilt the Liberal Party, has attracted tremendous, uh, a tremendous number of candidates right across the country that have varying experiences and expertise and backgrounds that they're bringing to the party and wanting to contribute towards uh, the party in, in forming the next government. I think that... Uh, um, the team that we have to offer offers that experience and the depth that's required to ensure that there are strong voices that bring the issues and the concerns of constituents to Ottawa. And one of the things that uh, I love about this riding and living here is that uh, I'm very happy to bring my experience in politics and my ability to bring people together and, and facilitator in a way. I mean, I yes, is I guess that, so. I mean, is that how you how you see yourself? I I see myself, and I've been known for being a bridge builder, for bringing people together and ensuring that everyone's voice is heard. Vancouver Granville is one of the most affluent ridings in British Columbia. The houses on this street would be worth more than a million dollars each. Affordability is an issue in this riding and in surrounding areas. In fact, a new study by RBC suggests that the affordability of housing in Metro Vancouver is nearing the worst level ever seen in Canada. You have to relate to people where they're at and certain people are concerned about whatever is happening in their local community and I want to be their representative so it's important to know about what they're concerned about. What are they concerned about? All kinds of things. I mean, we're on an interesting corner right here because, of course, the density is significantly changing around the right. Canby yeah. Corridor. Um, so Be some because of the, uh, the uh, Canada Line, right? The, because the, the Canada Line and municipal somewhere. rezoning decisions, and that's important to a lot of people, and they want to talk to you about you know, how that impacts their life. And but it's not something you can, change. as an MP, have any it's real not, impact but it's, on. But I am there to listen, right? <laughs> and that's really, and, and it's important for whoever is rep representing this area, and I hope it's me. Um, to know that they care about that and to know what's on their mind. So, you know, but a lot of people are, affordability is a very big issue in this riding. Um, so you hear about that. It's huge. And, of course, it's the cost of childcare, the lack of, you know, the need for transit. The, like, those are really big issues. So, I mean, Vancouver has become a very challenging city. It's, it's an expensive city to live in. And um, so people talk to you about what's happening in their lives in that way. They talk to you about wanting to hold on to their house, you know, or living in a basement suite with a family of four. Or um, So how, how does federal policy make that easier for people in a city like Vancouver? Well, of course, we're looking at, you know, with the NDP platform, some significant policies that would impact people's lives, child care being one of them, right? So many people in this area have kids, can't afford child care. It's, you know, it's, it's as expensive as their rent generally can't afford child care, either can't afford to go back to work or it's sending their kids to unregulated spaces or working part-time. So I can't tell you how many grandparents I've spoken to who are taking care of their grandchildren who are actually the strongest advocates for child care because they realize what's happening to their kids' lives. And what are the local issues in Vancouver Granville? Uh, the local issues, um, of course, taxes. I mean, you go and, and when you ask somebody, would you like higher taxes, you know, you, you're always, uh, it's, it's a bit of a throwaway question because you know what the answer is. Of course, we want lower taxes. Um, what we're hearing at the doorstep is um, really uh, a concern for the global economy, uh, a concern of job stability, a concern for people who are looking for work, that there's going to be jobs out there. And with parents, and again, we've got, uh, we've got a riding with, with uh, a large proportion of families here, there is a sense of wanting stability going forward so they know their kids are going to have jobs uh, or the jobs that they're training for will be there when they're done university. So that's what we're hearing on, uh, on kind of the ground level. Of course, um, the affordability of families buying homes in Vancouver Granville 
is uh, is top of mind. Well, Mr. And Harper promised to spend money to try and figure out where the buyers are coming from, didn't he? Fifteen million bucks or something like that. Well, I mean, I think, how, how does that sure. work out in, in a writing here? Would that resonate with people? Or yeah, absolutely, it does. Absolutely. I mean, when you look at an issue and you want to understand the issue, the first thing is you have to understand the data. So you have to gather the data, which is who's buying, who's staying, who's a citizen, who's not, and you have to compile the data to be able to understand that. You know, the one thing that Mr. Harper, I think, has shown over the last nine uh, years in government is he doesn't make rash decisions. And so this is about understanding the situation. This is about taking a step backward to say, what do we need to do? Because first and foremost, the Conservative Party is a party that supports families. We want to encourage home ownership, but we don't want to do anything in a rash way which all of a sudden backfires. So I think people recognize that. People recognize that there is not uh, an easy fix to this problem uh, or to this issue. Um, but well, I think particularly in Vancouver, I mean, the, the prices yeah, have course. just gone crazy. No, they, I mean, they, of course they have. Of course they have. But we have, we, you know, we have supporters in Shaughnessy who uh, we were just at a, an event yesterday. We were at two events in in, uh, in our riding yesterday. One of which was uh, in Shaughnessy. Another of which was uh, on Southwest Marine Drive. So both very lovely places to live. And you know, even the homeowners um, are asking questions about you know what happens to to our children when it's their turn to, yeah. uh, to buy homes. So, you know, our government has, ta has looked at this. They're taking this very seriously, uh, but they're doing it in a very logical and prudent manner, which uh, I think is the way to go. Affordability is a big issue. Eh? Absolutely, and it's not isolated to one portion of our riding. It is right across the board, and I would say that affordable housing is probably the biggest issue that comes up. Uh, whether you're on wherever you are on the housing spectrum from uh, rental incomes to looking at um, income-based cooperative housing to actually um, you know, being uh, able to afford the property taxes on your home. So, so, so how does a, a, an MP, a Liberal MP, I'm sure you hope, uh, uh, deal with that? How can you help issues of local uh, significance or like, like affordability? Well, I, it's, uh, you know, for our part, uh, uh, Justin Trudeau made a pretty significant announcement uh, around uh, investments in infrastructure uh, right across the country, um, doubling the investments that currently exist and then working as with other levels of government. So we would have a federal government working with, in this case, the city of Vancouver to identify the priorities that the city has to work with um, uh, the city to invest strategically in um, whether it be affordable housing, uh, daycare, recreation facilities, and look at the you know, structural infrastructure in terms of um, transportation corridors, the Broadway subway line is proposed to um, be built in Vancouver. And then, you know, we live in one of the most livable and green cities in the country, and um, you know, for our part as a city of Vancouver, we need true partners in Ottawa that are going to invest in thinking long term, thinking about uh, uh, climate change and thinking about building infrastructure that uh, uh, deals with those issues. What's your sense of the campaign? I'm not very happy with the Conservatives, I can tell you. I don't like the way they're handling the campaign and I don't like those really stupid ads about Justin Trudeau. I think they're they're childish and they're asinine and if I hear one more time that he has nice hair, I could spit nickels. What sort of things will lead you to decide one way or the other? Fear of my mother. She she is an ardent uh, supporter of the Prime Minister and uh, she finds out I vote any other way other than Conservative, I guess I'm in for it. What's your sense of the campaign? How do you think things are unfolding? Um, I don't know. I mean, it's too early to tell. Maybe because they called the election so early, but We'll see. I don't know. Maybe I'll get more excited in October. So. Thank you. It's a bit of a mismatch. I, uh, I don't know. There's no clear lines between the parties that I can see, especially between the NDP and the, and the Liberals. They're both going to spend a lot of money, and one says that it's going to take care of handling the money, but I'm not so sure that they can. I've been following this for pretty much since the last federal election, and... Uh, I've been uh, with the NDP now for about five years, and I, I don't see that changing. I'm Team Trudeau, <laughs> all the way, yeah. No more Harper. <laughs> it's really an incredibly diverse riding, and, um, and it's been fascinating going door to door, and you see, you know, a lot of people say, oh, it's quite a well-off riding. 
Well, it is. The property values are high. People are living, though, in all kinds of situations in shared homes. And well, I read that, that this riding actually has one of the highest per capita incomes of any riding in Canada. Yeah, well, maybe. Uh, so why would they vote NDP? I would never assume how someone votes based on what their income is. Well, That's the first thing. Well, but often... You, well, maybe, but, there, you know, there seems you to be a correlation. Board, I'll tell you. Um, first of all, I have many people who have voted um, Tory or Liberal, working hard on my campaign, <clears throat> who have voted Tory or Liberal in the past. And I think people are ready for change. They're looking for a new leader, and they're looking to Mulcair to, as that person. I always tell the story. We were at one uh, door, so I walked in, and they said, Who are you? I said, I'm... I'm your conservative candidate. And then they looked at Tyler and said, who are you, his bodyguard? <laughs> so he's there to keep me safe. Hey, Tyler? Yep. Awesome, awesome. In this neighborhood, you don't really need a bodyguard. What you do need is someone who speaks Chinese. We've had 10 years of Harper, and I can't tell you. I mean, I am having a coffee party tonight with a number of former conservatives. You know, there's a, not, there's a lot of people who are done. Um, who are not happy with the state of the country. But, but wouldn't the Conservatives be more likely to pick the Liberals? I don't think so. I think people are looking... I mean, first of all, these aren't necessarily Conservatives. They're people that sort of go, who, you know, who do I think is the best leader you know, to run this country and who, who has the most consistent values and who do I think um, is the best next Prime Minister? You know, I'm looking at these, the neighbourhood here and I see an old house, a vacant lot that's being redeveloped, an old house, a brand new house, etc. Is that indicative of what's going on in this Absolutely neighborhood? Absolutely it is. Yeah, for sure it is. And it doesn't matter whether you're here in uh, South South Granville, which is around 70th, um, or, you know, you're further on the uh, on the east side. Uh, you see a lot of this. You see redevelopment. Uh, it's somewhat course. controversial, though, in, in Vancouver, isn't it? Um, I mean, idea? I, you know, I think we're... I mean, it certainly was 15, 20 years ago when you had... Um, a stark difference between the houses that were being built and the new house and the the previous houses, but I think what you're seeing here is um, perhaps a lot more consistent integration of the homes. But um, expensive yeah. houses, though, right? New or old? Yeah, expensive land, expensive land. And so when you come around here, um, this kind of thing is absolutely typical. But a lot of times we go house to house, and um, you know, based on Elections Canada data, we find out whether or not. Uh, a family is, is on the voters list, and if they are, of course, we go and talk to them. If they're not, we go to the next house. But um, uh, you but, find most people are registered. Oh, for sure. But you know, it depends what neighborhood, and you know, it depends what block. And yeah. you know, I'm not sure what the data looks like in terms of citizen versus um, residents who are not citizens. But you know, there, there's enough there where you notice them. I grew up around the corner from here on 37th and Granville, between Granville and Oak, so I know this area very well. Um, went to elementary school and high school here. Um, and have worked in the politics actually of this neighborhood. I worked with Gregor Robertson when he was the MLA for Vancouver Fairview. So current it's actually mayor. current mayor. Yeah, it's really been fun knocking on the same doors that I knocked on 10 years ago and finding similar people. And you know, what about the issues? Have the issues changed much? Uh, yeah, I mean, I would say that people are really they talk to you a lot about being ready for change at the federal government. Like you get to their door and it's within 30 seconds that they say just. I just want a change of government. Just, you know, what can we do to replace Harper? So you definitely hear that a lot. And, of course, I was campaigning provincially before, so you do hear different issues. Um, so you worked for I Robertson worked in, provincially? Yeah, and then I worked, I worked for Canadian Jewish Congress. Um, I was the director of Pacific Region. I've worked for a couple of different environmental organizations. Um, you worked for Obama in some capacity? I worked, well, I worked in the States. I did a master's in urban policy in New York, so I care a lot about cities. and particularly interested in, you know, representing the cities having a voice at the federal government. So, um, and I did, I worked on a super, with a super PAC in the States that made a number of um, ele election videos for the 2012 Obama um, presidential race. One in particular, great. apparently, would cause quite a stir. A few, a few. Well, when you work with people, Sarah Silverman is, will cause a stir, and same with Samuel Jackson. But yeah, I was very lucky. I worked with some great people. Um, and I, yeah. well, I was just going to say, do you, can you transfer those skills now to being a candidate? Of course. I mean, to me, it's all. This is about organizing and communicating. How important is it to knock on somebody's door? Well, I, I think that uh, there's lots of mediums to reach every segment of our population. Certainly, social media is a revolution that connects the young people. But I think that uh, you know, local campaigns and campaigns matter in the. The core of a campaign is knocking on the doors. Um, it's the part that, for me, is 
uh, most empowering in terms of the what we're doing, what we want to do, and um, hearing what people's issues are. Uh, if they've become somewhat disillusioned with politics and politicians, it's that human connection that uh, is that empowering aspect of of going around and knocking on doors and getting to know neighborhoods more than you once have. Um, I find that uh, people like to be heard, they like to know that their voice matters, and um, it's, uh, it's... It's a personal business, isn't it, politics, at the end of the day? I think ultimately if you want to be uh, successful, and when I say successful in politics, it's ensuring that you build a community network, that you understand your constituency and can be able to if given the opportunity to to present that somewhere else and to advocate so it is uh if you didn't like people i don't think you would get uh, very far so in a, in a writing like this it's supposed to be fairly tight how important is the ground game oh i think it's critical i think it's absolutely critical more important than the national campaign no nothing replaces the national campaign I mean, I think as we talked about earlier, we can move the needle so much. I mean, I, I think the local candidates matter. There's no question about it. The ground game matters. How much? Who knows? But when you've got a tight race, I mean, and I think this can make the difference between winning and not being successful. So we take this seriously. But as we go from door to door, the key here for us is to engage with voters, to ask questions or to answer any questions they have and to identify our vote. And, of course, it's much easier when you're in a riding such as we have where um, a significant number of the voters speak Mandarin or Cantonese. To have good friends like Tyler here, who I can tell you, Tyler goes back to school in a number of days, but he has been out with us pretty much every day for the last two months and uh, has been essential. Well, you literally so, speak the language, right? He, absolutely, yeah. absolutely. So do you find that uh, people are paying attention? I mean, yeah, they, they definitely. Know that, uh, a certain segment is very much paying attention, and then I would say another segment is um, really starting to. And then, you know, a tiny percentage of, oh, this election, when is it? Like, so there's a little bit of information um, sharing that's still happening, but it's pretty good. I mean, people are, you get to people's doors, they talk to you about all kinds of issues, they know the names of the bills, they, really? you know, yeah. I mean, there's all, people talk to you about municipal and provincial, you know, federal, like, you sort of get everything, but people are pretty well informed. It's the ground game that may make the difference. Particularly in close national campaigns, the local team that wins the ground game Everybody come on in nice and close to mirror. Beautiful. may have a real reason to cheer.